spring sports underway in what has been kind of wintry conditions and we talk baseball and softball to begin the show. Let's start softball with Destiny Lismore who is a second baseman on the softball team. You guys are off to a seven and eight start but have really done a good job of late winning four in a row fighting through tough conditions at times and uh, how important is this non-conference schedule to get ready for the OVC where you're picked to win it. Right, it's super important. Like these non-conference games, you build your team chemistry, you're getting your pitching staff together, you're building your lineup one through nine. Like I feel like each game matters because our non-conference schedule doesn't look tough, but it's so hard. Like all these teams are competing for their conference championships as well. So it's only gonna prepare us for these games that we're gonna go into during conference. Already hitting 345 home runs. So uh, the long ball's coming your way at times. Slugging percentage leads the team at seven so do you feel like you're seeing the pitchers well? Yeah, I feel like I'm seeing them really well. This year I just kind of wanted to focus on just consistency with my bat, and I feel like, you know, I took the time during preseason to really fix that in my swing, and I feel like I'm just seeing it really well right now. You had 17 doubles to lead the team last year. Does, does coach talk to you about we need doubles or, or hits in the gap more than home runs, or does she just say swing and hit it and put it in play? Yeah, coach loves the long ball. She loves it, and, like, she's just up for whatever it is. Like, you know, in certain situations, Situations, you know, the long ball is going to come through, but being able to like hit the balls in the gap, she loves it as well. So when you get to home plate, do you have a, like a special thing you do when when your teammates greet you after a home run? We always like jump up and hit the plate and yell boom because <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Everybody yells boom. Everybody yells boom. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, you always have done this because it's it's colder up here. So you go south or east and, and play these kind of round robin events mm -hmm. away from home. But finally this weekend you get home against Bradley for three games. That's going to be exciting to be at Gertrude Hood Field finally. Yes, it's super exciting. Playing at home is just a different feeling. You're more comfortable. You're more you know in tune with the field, in tune with the fans. Like we're just ready to go. And then eventually you're going to hit the OVC and you're picked to win it. You got uh, a regular season title last year, but fell just short. So obviously the goal would be the NCAA tournament, I would assume. Yes, that is the ultimate goal right now is to just finish regular season, win the tournament and head to regionals. You are a biology major. Yes. Once you get that degree and you are a senior, uh, what, what's in your future after after college? I plan to go to um, physical therapy school and get my doctor in that program and see where that kind of takes me from there. Why, why that, of all the things you could do? <laughs> I um, Back in high school, I tore my ACL and kind of just completely you know, did that. And so I just have a just a drive for it, just to help people get back on their feet and do what they love to do. All right, we'll see you out at the Ball Diamond this weekend. Good Thank luck. Thank you. All right, let's keep our fingers crossed. If the weather permits, it will be a doubleheader against the Braves of Bradley at 1 and 3 on Saturday. By the way, the Curdles also have a one and three doubleheader start on Wednesday, March 13th at home against Dayton. We're going to stay on the diamond and talk with the EKU baseball's closer when inside EKU Sports continues. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Is Pickle struggling to get up and down the stairs? No. Why? Does she cough a lot or often experience shortness of breath? Um, no. Does she hang out with the wrong crowd of dogs? Say what? I'm afraid Pickles here is a smoker. When you smoke, your pet smokes. Quit Now Kentucky offers you the free help you need to quit tobacco. To learn more, text QUIT KY to 797979. We stay on the diamond now on Inside EKU Sports, switch from softball to baseball, and Aaron Oceanbine, who is the closer on the EKU baseball team, joins us now. You're off to a good start. You've pitched eight innings through seven games and allowed only two hits, no runs. You've had 13 strikeouts, so out of the pen, you're doing really well so far. Uh, early in the season, how do you have it going so early? Um, honestly, it's just a mentality of taking what you worked on in the fall and trying to manipulate that into the spring. And really, you're just trying to take it one outing at a time. 
you started down in New Orleans in the Andre Dawson Classic, warm weather there, and then you get to other places and it's been really cold, so you've had to pitch through all kinds of different weather. How do you handle that? Uh, well, Coach Cole, he has us do this pre-throwing routine. Um, it's just mainly to get the blood flowing, jump ropes, bands, uh, plyo balls. Basically, it's just to get your whole body moving, um, and that really helps a lot, especially in this cold weather. Early on last year, you were a starter, and then they took you to the back end of the bullpen, and you've established yourself as one of the best closers in the OVC. Uh, the difference between the mentality of a starter and being a closer, and which do you like better? <laughs> uh, well, the mentality changes a little bit. As a starter, you want to try and go deep into games. And as a closer, you're really just focused on getting three outs. I like being a closer, honestly. Uh, you just go out there and give it your best stuff for three outs. You had a great experience in the Cape Cod League, which is kind of the iconic summer baseball league for college players, and did very well. Fourth highest strikeout total. You were really good strikeouts per nine innings. What did that experience mean to your career, and how is it going to carry over to this this spring baseball season at EKU? Oh, it was amazing. <clears throat> I mean, you just you go out there, and it has that prestigious look for it. Uh, it's the best in the country, that everyone says. Uh, it was just an honor to go up there. Um, I was lucky enough to get a full contract after the um, partial contract season was over. Um, but ultimately, I mean, it was up there just trying to work on my own stuff. Uh, met some great people. Coaches were great. And then coming back in the spring, you just kind of have to take that confidence you have and you just kind of got to roll with it. You already have your degree in aviation at EKU. Now you're in corporate security in grad school. So obviously uh, you have a good solid base academically yeah. for your future. But I know the way, how well you have pitched that you would love to try pro ball first, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if I get the shot, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, you got to give that uh, the bus rides and everything else that will come <laughs> with it. Uh, you, I, I'm sure you've talked to others. You know what's ahead. What yeah. do you think you have to do to be able to make it in, in, in minor league baseball and move on up the ladder? Um, I mean, it's all about just performing. You know, you got to take those long bus rides. You got to take all those games back to back to back, and you just got to you got to roll with it, have fun, and hopefully everything will work out. For that, EKU, third place in the OVC tournament last year. Picked to finish sixth in the OVC this year, but I know the goal is to, to get to the tournament and, and win it and try to make the NCAA. What's it going to take? Because I know you begin the OVC play with the team picked to win it in Moorhead State. Yeah, I mean, we just got to take what we did last year. We got a bunch of returners from the starter starting lineup, and, you know, I think we'll be able to lead the team in the right direction, and we just got, you know, you just got to play well, take it one week at a time. Last pitch of the ball game, uh, bases loaded, full count. You got to have that one pitch. What's your go-to pitch? Uh, fastball. Fastball, blow yeah. by him, right? Yeah. Well, keep it up. Good luck, Aaron. Good luck to the team. I know you're going to be at home this weekend mm -hmm. for three big ones, and, and I know you love to play at a Turkey Use Field and Earl Combs Stadium. Absolutely. All right, good luck to the baseball team. Now, they will be at home, as we said. It is uh, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, triple header of action against Oakland University. Friday's first pitch at four, Saturday at two, Sunday at 1, and then the OVC season starts over March 15th in Moorhead, Kentucky. And when we come back on Inside EKU Sports, we'll meet a track great, and we'll talk men's golf. At Eastern Kentucky University, we recognize greatness starts in the classroom, but it doesn't end there. You have to get hands-on get real-world experience, and discover who you are meant to be. Be a crime fighter. Be a visionary. Be a colonel. See what you can be. Visit go.eku.edu slash colonel. Take it from me. Quitting tobacco isn't easy. It can take several attempts before you can finally quit for good. So if at first you don't succeed, quit. Quit again. And remember, even though quitting is hard, you don't have to do it alone. Quit Now Kentucky is with you every step of the way. 
For free help quitting tobacco, text QUIT KY to 797979 or go to quitnowkentucky.org. She ran track at Eastern Kentucky, and Nicole Gibson goes into the newest class of the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame. Nicole, we were talking uh, back for your career path, now a police officer in Lexington, yes. but that wasn't where you were headed while you were here at EKU. No. <laughs> science geek, you said. I'm a science geek. I've always liked science, and so, that's what my degrees are in. <laughs> anthropology. So how does that lead over to, to becoming a police officer and a very successful one at uh, the Lexington Police, Police Officer of the Year in 2016? Well, I, uh, you know, ran track here, um, got my bachelor's in anthropology, had a double minor in biology and forensic anthropology, um, and I still wanted to stay to help out with the track team and still train, and my coach was like, well, would you try getting in a master's program? So I looked at the programs. Unfortunately, they didn't have anything along the lines of anthropology, but I did see one for public health. And I thought that was very interesting. So of course I picked the one that's one of the longest, <laughs> three years. <laughs> so I stayed, um, worked on my master's, got that in public health. Um, and then that was in 2008 is when I graduated and the real world happened. You know, had to get out, find work and stuff like that. And as much as I wanted to do lab work and stuff like that, I also had bills and had to work. So I actually took a position as an animal control officer initially in Lexington. And that's kind of where my love for law enforcement started. And I loved it. I was there for three and a half years and we would assist the police on certain calls. And one day an officer was like, you know, you should really put in for us. And I was like, uh. I'll see. So I looked into it. I like a challenge. So I was like, I'll put in for it. We'll see what happens. And I put in, got in on my first try and haven't looked back since. <laughs> How did running track and having to be disciplined mm -hmm. studies and the athletic part of it here at EKU, how did it formulate your ability to be successful in a career? Well, to be a police officer, obviously, well, you should be very athletic because um, Sometimes people do run from you <laughs> and sometimes people will fight you. Um, you want to be in the best shape you can be to try to deter that from happening. But if it happens to be ready for that when it does um, happen, um, the discipline, being a student athlete, it's a little different than just being a regular student. Um, you know, not only do you have obligations from the athletic front while you're here, you also have academic obligations. So it's kind of like it's a little more extra added pressure, you know, because you want to do good in classes, because if you don't do good in your studies, you can't run and want to run or you want to play your sport. So and it kind of goes in both ways and you want to do good in your sport. You know, if you're on a scholarship, you know, you want to keep good grades and do good in your sport, you know, kind of keep scholarship, you know, so it all ended up working out. Um, it, it made me be very disciplined and making sure my studies are up to par, making sure athletically I'm doing what I need to do to stay up the par to try to be the best I can be. And then when you're in a profession like mine, it's a lot of multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> we wear a lot of different hats. So to be able to make sure this report's done on time and turned in on time and, you know, I'm going to have court dates and got to be ready to testify and articulate why I took this course of action or why I charged this, it's, it's all it takes discipline. You were so fast uh, and still in the record book, second fastest 100 meters, second mm -hmm. fastest 100 uh, meter hurdles. Mm -hmm. So quickly, why why were you such a good runner? Did you have to work at your speed or were you um, naturally Actually, gifted? naturally I was always fast. Um, always fast, always knew I wanted to run. I knew I was fast. I always knew I wanted to run track. Um, I used to watch on TV, Flojo, Florence Griffin. Yeah. She's like one of my favorite track athletes and just watching her run, I'm like, I wanna be like her one day. and. The teammates that I had at the time, I mean, they were awesome. We all encouraged each other and we all wanted each other to be, you know, better. So, Congratulations on the honor going in with your, your coach, <laughs> uh, the legendary Rick Urban. Uh, quite an honor here yes. in this class. Uh, congratulations, Nicole. Thank you so much. All right, Nicole Gibson now in the EKU Athletics Hall of Fame. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference.
Golf is a split season. You play in the fall and then again in the spring, and the spring part is about ready to begin. Important because the OBC championships at the end of the spring season. And Mike Whitson, the men's golf coach, joins us now here on Inside EKU Sports. You had a good fall season. You had two events where you finished second, two more events when you where you finished third out of the six you played. How much carryover can there be from the fall to now the spring? Well, it depends on your work ethic. And the guys really came back after Christmas, and they, they've been really busting it since they've been back since Christmas. And um, I think the carryover is going to be really good. I think we, you know, especially Eric winning that last tournament in the fall, I think that's going to carry over to his spring. And, and we're looking forward to, to getting started on Friday um, at Pinehurst. We're, we've been practicing for a long time now, over a month, and uh, the guys are kind of bored at practice, and that's a good sign. So I'm looking forward to, to the spring and having some of that carryover uh, go right into our tournament at Pinehurst on Friday. One of the iconic golf courses, Pinehurst, the Pinehurst Intercollegiate. Uh, what do you want out of your team in that in that first tournament? And talk about Eric Linwall as well, since you mentioned him. Well, we're gonna, I think we're going to have a good week. Obviously, the weather this week isn't the best to prepare uh, before we leave uh, tomorrow. Um, we play a fantastic golf course, and as I said, the guys are, are excited. We play Pinehurst number eight. Um, that's not the one that's hosted the U.S. Open, but it's still a great golf course. Uh, I'm expecting the guys to hit a lot of good shots. The first tournament of the spring can be difficult with some competitive rust, which we've talked about as a team. Uh, and I think Eric is going to. I think Eric's going to really hit the ground running on Friday. Uh, he's been he's been working really hard. Uh, worked on a few things mechanically over the winter to eat, to get even better. Um, and I think he's going to I think he's going to have a great week. The way the NCAA uh, runs the spring season, you can play golf 24 days before you get into your tournament. Mm -hmm. You'll have four tournaments uh, there in North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, Arkansas. And then you play a single match at Arlington early in April against Eastern Michigan. So what are you looking for building up to that uh, late April OBC championship down in Alabama? Just gradual improvement. Uh, I've talked to the guys about the, the intense travel schedule we'll go through. We really have short breaks in between each tournament, so taking care of themselves, um, plenty of sleep and, uh, and things like that. Um, and gradual improvement and continue your, your hard work. And um, I, think, I think having fun on the road and having fun out on the golf course with each other is gonna be important as we go along. But uh, each, tournament, each tournament presents its own challenges, uh, both from the field and from the golf course itself. And uh, the gradual improvement through the spring, continue our hard work. And, and when OVC rolls around there, uh, April 21st, I believe, is the first day. You are right. Uh, we, yep. will, we will be ready. In Muscle Shoals, Alabama, five seniors, three mm -hmm. juniors, one sophomore on your team. So a pretty veteran team. Uh, what, what do you like about your team? And if there is a, a hole in, in team golf, you know, what do you have to fill or hope you can improve upon? Um, the first thing I like about them, I just like the guys. I mean, they, they mean a lot to me, and they're a great, great group of guys. They hang out together off the course, and I think that helps us play really well on the course. Um, some of the things that they do on the course, we, we, we have to get a little bit better at. We have to get a little bit better at course management and things like that as we, as we move on. Uh, we're a pretty consistent golf team. We have some firepower at the front of our lineup, and we have some consistency uh, in, in the four and five spot, which I really like. Um, so I think I think those things combined, along with again uh, a lot of hard work and, and good camaraderie, um, we'll have a great spring season. Got to win the OVC to make the NCAA's Jacksonville State pick to win. Mm -hmm. EKU picked third in the preseason guess. What's the key to winning the OVC? The, the OVC tournament um, this year is. is I mean, there's six or seven teams that can probably be the OVC champion uh, there on April 23rd, the last day. Uh, we're one of those teams. I, I, think it's, I think it's a matter of, of who gets there, who makes the putts, and um, who is a consistent through the week, uh, and we'll, that will be the team that will come out on top. Mike played golf for EKU, graduated in 1998, had a 64 once. I always should be nice to you and mention that. What, what was that day like for you? Where'd that occur? <laughs> that occurred at, uh, at, I think the course is now um, Gaylord Springs. I, I, it, was, it was Opryland's course. Yeah. May still be owned by, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, it, was, it was Springhouse Golf Course owned by Opryland. Uh, that was uh, the second round. Unfortunately, I didn't pull off the championship the next day. But at the same time, it is a very special day and I, that I will always remember, and I'll always remind the guys uh, before the OVC tournament, I'm really rooting for you to shoot 65. I because I think I still have the record for the OVC tournament. <laughs> there so. you go. Did I ever tell you when I shot a 31? 
You did. I did. It was on a putt putt course. <laughs> it was 18. <laughs> There's no putt putt for the golf team. Good luck. Uh, man, great place to start Pinehurst. Uh, good luck this season. Yeah, it's a cool place. We're looking forward to the week. All right. Mike Woodson is the men's golf coach, and that does it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. You can follow and keep up with all of the EKU athletic events throughout this spring by liking and following our social media pages that you see there on the screen. And we'll be back in two weeks with our next edition of Inside EKU Sports. As always, go Biggie.